Good morning. Welcome to this celebration of life of Katie, of Thomas, of Karen L, all the names, daddy, husband, uncle, grandfather. The Liturgy for the Dead is an Easter liturgy. It finds its meaning in the resurrection. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, we too are raised So this liturgy is characterized by joy, joy of a life well lived, and uncertainty that neither life nor death, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come will ever separate us from the love of God. This joy does not mean, though, that grief is unchristian. The very love that we have one another in Christ brings deep sorrow when we're parted by death. Jesus himself wept at the grave of his own friend. So while we rejoice that the one we love has entered in the nearest, nearer presence of our Lord, we also sorrow and sympathy with those who mourn. During this liturgy, we will also be celebrating Holy Communion. Please know that all are welcome. We'll come to the railing and just simply put out your hand for bread and, and also wine. If you would like to have to dip the bread into the wine, please hand it to the chalice bearer and they will dip it for you. Everyone is also welcome to a festive luncheon following this service in the parish hall. A good time to share stories and to feel the love of our Lord and the love of Thomas who endures. I invite you therefore to Settle in, make your hearts open to the love of God and the love of Thomas that is still with us. Please rise as you are able. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though this body be destroyed, yet shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not as a stranger. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For if we live, we live unto the Lord, and if we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, even so saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labors.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose mercies cannot be numbered, accept our prayers on behalf of thy servant Thomas, and grant him an entrance into the land of light and joy and the fellowship of thy saints. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from Lamentations. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. The word of the Lord. The psalm will be read responsively in full verse. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help. help. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil, he shall preserve thy soul. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, And if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now, we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. 
And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. So first I should just uh, introduce myself for those who don't know. I'm Father John Mudd, and I'm a friend of the Thomas family. As a matter of fact, 31 years ago, shortly after I had taken an assignment as the director of fundraising for a high school in Washington, D.C., Archbishop Carroll High School, one of my colleagues, a young assistant, suggested that we do a fundraiser a benefit concert at the Kennedy Center and that we rent out the concert hall. Now the concert hall is the largest hall at the theater, at the uh, center, over 2,000 people. So I said, why not? And uh, we began the process, not knowing exactly what we were doing, I can assure you, nor how we were going to pull this off or how we were going to fill the theater. Uh, We called the Kennedy Center and inquired about the concert hall. We reserved the hall and um, began negotiating with a major entertainer. Of course, we had to pay a deposit to reserve the concert hall. And my assistant, who was taking care of all that kind of work, said to me, "Um, we need a cashier's check for $2,000. And I said, cashier's check. Can't we just write a check from the school? And he explained that the manager of the theater was insisting on a cashier's check. I countered saying, the Catholic Church has been around for 2,000 years. (laughs) If that's not assurance enough that we're good for the money, what is? He replied, no. Miss Thomas insists on a cashier's check. (laughs) So I called Miss Thomas, thinking my charm, my position, uh, arguing for righteousness would be insurance enough. But Miss Thomas insisted that I send her a cashier's check. Now my father's from England. And he always sounded, even to his children, as authoritarian. So when I heard Miss Thomas's accent and the sound of her officious response, I immediately fell into the position of a dutiful son and said, the cashier's check is on the way. (laughs) From then on, year after year, when we uh, reserved the concert hall, I was working with Miss Thomas, and before long we became friends. And once we became friends, I was invited to the Thomas family home um, and was introduced to Elizabeth's parents. And I was welcomed, I can assure you, I can assure you, into the Thomas home and into the Thomas family. I think the fact that I was a priest made the acceptance a little easier, I'm sure, but nevertheless, I was welcomed with open arms. Since the initial greeting, I visited the Thomas home on numerous occasions, meeting other friends, the immediate family, and the extended family. On every occasion, Mr. Thomas greeted me with warmth, with a warm handshake and a sincere smile always making me feel welcome and engaging me in conversation. As brilliant and as accomplished as he was, and as important as he was, 
He always focused on me and my interests. Of course, he loved to tell stories of his family and his upbringing and his education, but nevertheless, he showed genuine interest in me on every occasion, respecting me as a priest and a friend of the family. He was dignified, yet never pompous. He was a good and kind person. He loved his wife, his daughters, his grandchildren, his extended family, both in India and in the United States. He was a man of sincere faith, proudly tracing his heritage to Thomas the Apostle. His faith was demonstrated in so many ways. He led an accomplished life. He was well-educated, well-formed in values and religion, and he served his country in the international community with a distinguished career as an engineer specializing in nuclear management waste. He traveled the world visiting more than 40 countries during his career, but he never, ever um, held up his accomplishments. He was a respected scientist. He was a gentleman, a scholar, a man of integrity and faith. And I feel privileged to have known him, been welcomed into his home, and to be able to stand up here before you today and pay tribute to this really good man. I pray that God now will receive him into the reward that has been prepared for him from the very foundation of the world. And I also ask God to comfort his family and to strengthen you. And I just want to finish with a little prayer. This is a prayer that was written by um, George McLeod, a pastor who pastored on the island of Iona off the coast of Scotland. Iona was established in the, um, um, by St. Columba of Ireland sometime in the sixth century as a model of virtue and spirituality with the hope that the monks would eventually bring Christianity to the Gaelic Irish world and to Europe. And um, George MacLeod was pastor of a, of a community there in the 20th century. And he wrote this prayer, which I'd like to finish with today. He says, be thou triune God in the midst of us as we give thanks for all those who have gone before us. They in thy near presence still worship with us in the mystery of the one family in heaven and on earth. And if it be thy holy will, tell them how much we love them and how much we miss them and how we long for that day when we shall all meet with them again. Strengthen us to go on now in loving service of all thy children, and thus shall we have communion with thee, and in thee with our beloved ones. Thus shall we know within ourselves that there is no death, and that only a veil divides, thin as a gossamer. Good morning, everyone. First, I want to thank you all personally for taking time out of your Tuesday morning to remember and celebrate my father. I am Sarah, the youngest daughter of Thomas. Some of you know him as Mr. Thomas, others as KT. To relatives, he's known as Anya Papin or Anya Chain. Onion to his wife, not to be mistaken with the vegetable, with an O. Pisha to his grandchildren, and Daddy to me and Elizabeth, who is also nicknamed Reno. My dad accomplished a lot in his 96 years, starting from the tiny village in Kerala 
to the heights of his career as a nuclear scientist. But above all, in our eyes, his biggest accomplishment was being an amazing father, husband, and grandfather to his family. There were two things that were important to him, his faith and his family. My father was a devout Christian and always took time every morning to turn inward to seek guidance and support from the Lord before his day began. His faith was always at the core of his family, even as a young child in Kerala. I remember going on vacation to Kerala and listening to some of the prayers and the hymns in our language, Malayalam, which in my child's mind were boring and long, but to my father and his family, this faith sustained them every day through births, through deaths, the wars, and all the various experiences he's had in his life. Our father grew up in a village called Pullad, a beautiful setting of rice paddy fields and coconut trees, plethora of fruit trees. And in fact, Kerala is nicknamed God's own country. His fondest memories are of his parents, his five brothers whom he loved dearly, and his many, many cousins, all of whom he repeatedly talked about in the last days of his life. He left Kerala to study in other parts of India, and after the village and starting his education, there was no stopping his yearning for knowledge. He worked his way up, and we ended up in Bombay, or Mumbai, as it's called now. And that's where Renu and I lived our formative years. Here, faith continued to be the core of his being. He was very active in our church, our, called All Saints Church, and in fact, he was part of the vestry for many, many years. Family was always at the core of his being. In fact, he went out of his way to help many family members and staff get good jobs in India. In those days, he traveled quite a bit to exotic countries while I was in elementary school. And no matter which part of the world he was at, he always remembered us. He never forgot about us. I have vivid memories of waiting for him to come home so that his suitcase could be opened and he would always bring back toys, sometimes in other languages. Have you played Monopoly in Spanish? Because I have. <laughs> Clothes, Toblerone chocolate, which I used to steal from my sister after I ate mine, and so much more. I am dating myself, but he also brought back my first ABBA cassette tape. And that changed my world at that time. So some fun facts about him. He always had a briefcase with him, whether working or traveling, even to get on a plane. He always wore a suit and tie. He was always the best dressed man around. In fact, work was so ingrained in him, he kept wanting to go back to work until last month. He always said there was a meeting he had to go to. He kept a piece of Ricola candy in his pocket at all times. He was an incessant list maker and extremely organized. He was a walking calculator. He could do the most complicated mathematical problems in his head. In fact, at 95, I gave him some math problems to do, and he accurately calculated them in his head, and in fact, even found an error in my master sheet. After Mumbai, we moved to Vienna, where we lived for a while, and on weekends, he would go explore all the nearby towns and countries that were in close proximity to each other. And I remember a road trip that we took to so many different countries, and he planned everything, all the way from our accommodations to, to getting our tourist visas. It was sort of like a Chevy Chase trip, but we didn't have all the disasters. It was just, it was just a really memorable trip that we had, going to 10 countries. Now, he excelled in a lot of things, but there was one thing that was challenging to him, and that was the German language. He was soft-spoken, but like Renu, he wasn't shy. He had no problem going up to a stranger and just starting to talk in what he thought was German. Sometimes it would be German, sometimes there would be words of Malayalam, Hindi, English, 
all came out in a sentence. But, and that embarrassed me to no end as a teenager. His wife, Annie, of 69 years, and the two of us children were the core of his existence. He was very protective of us, and he was a worrier. He worried about everything. A frequent topic was my weight. Every day he would ask Renu and me. He would call me Sara Mole. Sara Mole, what is your weight today? <laughs> Annie, give her some food. She is not, she's a little skinny. When our nuclear family started to expand in 1999, he adored his three grandchildren, Lily, Anna, and Tina. He always said they were his children dipped in honey. My parents would come to California, stay with us, play with the children, and in fact, he did get married a second time. This was very special because his youngest granddaughter, Tina, insisted on marrying him. And there was a ceremony at home, and it was official. In addition to his faith and his family, his third love was to sing. And I'm sure many of you heard him sing. He sang, Que sera, sera, to me all the time. And I thought it was to me, because my name's Sarah. He sang Edelweiss, You Are My Sunshine, or a hymn. And he continued to sing until the end of his life. In closing, on behalf of our family, Daddy, I want to thank you for your love, selflessness, and guidance you provided us over the years. You were the best father, grandfather, husband that any of us could wish for. I wish I could hear you sing Que Sera, Sera again one more time. But for now, we will hold on to our wonderful memories of you. We love you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. 
In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one who loves us most. Please be seated. Good morning. It is so good to hear stories of Thomas, of your love for him, of his love for you, through the songs, nicknames, friendships that he's made, the life that he showed all of us, a life lived in the love of God. So it is no surprise then that his family chose 1 Corinthians as one of the readings for this morning. It's a passage all about love. Thomas knew what it meant to love, and his life indeed was guided by God's love. And the last line may be the most familiar to you. And now, faith, hope, and love abide. These three, the greatest of these is love. Now, this is a popular reading for weddings, isn't it? As an assembly gathers to celebrate new love between two people, the Apostle Paul is encouraging and indeed teaching a community in Corinth about what it means to love Not just any love, but agape love, sacrificial love that unites all people and brings wholeness to creation, a love that can indeed be witnessed in a life well lived. Such love crosses boundaries of difference. Thomas did that. Such love seeks mutuality of affection. He did that. Such is the love of God that works for healing and the flourishing of all life. We see this love, indeed, most clearly in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus who brought good news to the lost and the least. Today, we also hear this passage as words of instruction. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And so now, this morning, we hear these words as an instruction from us through the life of Thomas. We can see this patient and kind love in Thomas's love for his family. His wife, Anna, and daughters, Elizabeth and Sarah, and grandchildren, Lily, Anna, and Tina. His second marriage, right? We all just heard that. (laughs) A love that was steadfast and indeed intimate. Such love is enacted in simple things. A family in prayer. A family gathered around the table for a meal and conversation a family of song and singing. He loved to sing to his daughters. I hear that You Are My Sunshine was a favorite. He even made up a song for them, (laughs) which Elizabeth sang at one of my final visits with Thomas. They sang to one another to the end. And indeed, he did have that briefcase because at one of our visits, he said he was needed to 
go. And so he said, yes, I'll, I'll call the driver. And he was ready to go <laughs> to work. <laughs> so Love surely guided his career in nuclear waste management, which eventually took him to Europe as a senior scientific officer and senior advisor at the United Nations International Atomic Energy Agency. When I heard that, I thought, how can I visit this man, this great man? But when I entered their home, it's a house of humility, of people who greet one another as if they are Christ himself. Indeed, we should all live in this way. Thomas contributed to the world in love, researching ways to make the world a safer place for all humanity. And his love grew through his faithful practices as a Christian. He dwelled in God's word of love daily. His personal King James Bible was well worn. Its pages thumbed through on countless days of prayer. He had inscribed the names of beloved family members on its pages, their births and their deaths, so that their memory could remain close to him. Each day he could remember each one and give thanks to God for their lives. Their lives too lived well, lived in love. So let us hear the love of God made known in Thomas's life. Thomas was patient. Thomas was kind. Thomas was not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. Thomas did not insist on his own way. He was not irritable or resentful. Thomas did not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoiced in truth. And now hear the deepest of all truths. Love never ends. God has broken the bonds of death. Each of us is made for the resurrection life. And Thomas has shown that in his life, the resurrected life is lived now and also lived after death. I invite you now also to remember a moment that you had an encounter with KT or Thomas or all the other names he was known by. How did he show love to you? Now my question for you is how can you take that love that has been gifted to you and show it to others? With Thomas's life as a guide, it is now our turn. Our turn to love others as Thomas loved his family and his friends and the world. It is our turn to make up songs and sing them to children. It is our turn to inscribe the name of Thomas on the pages of our heart. To remember him, to give thanks to God for his witness of love. While Thomas's life on this earth is no longer his life, his death has been transformed. He is present to us now in a new way. And may his love continue in the stories that you tell. And please do tell them in the love that you share and the songs that you sing. You see, never love never ends. It is through stories and songs and relationships that the reality and reach of Thomas's life will not end. Indeed, he is released from the limitations of this life, entered greater life to be with his creator. And in that reality, we can rejoice. And so it is now our turn to sing to Thomas. Let's sing, You Are My Sunshine. Want to come join me? Okay. And any of you who know this as well. You are my sunshine, my
is still our sunshine. Thomas, you are our sunshine, and you are now shining brightly for the arms of God for all people. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, found on page four of your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God, who hast knit together thine elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, grant, we beseech thee, to thy whole church in paradise and on earth, thy light and thy peace. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and that through the grave and gates of death we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that thy Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Grant to thy faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from our sins and serve thee with a quiet mind. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in thy fatherly care, that casting all their grief on thee, they may know the consolation of thy love. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a reasonable and holy hope, in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Grant us with all who have died in the hope of the resurrection to have our consummation and bliss in thy eternal and everlasting glory, and with St. Peter and all thy saints, to receive the crown of life which thou dost promise to all who share in the victory of thy Son, Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to come and bring it up with me.
on a hill. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and at all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and doth comfort us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to thy faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body doth lie in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image. And of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, 
and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we may most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit, to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son. And be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and he, we in him, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. This is the Lord's table. Come, you who have much faith, and you who would like to have more. Come, you, come, you who have come often, and you who have not been for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed. Come, it is the Lord who invites us to be fed here. All are welcome.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank Thee for that in Thy great love Thou hast fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, and hast given us a foretaste of Thy heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be unto us a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all thy saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to thy servant with all thy saints. Where sorrow and pain, pain are, are no more, more neither, neither sighing, but life, life everlasting. Thou only art immortal, the creator and maker of mankind. And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and unto earth shall we return. For so thou didst ordain when thou created me, saying, Dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. All we go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to thy servant with thy saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but everlasting. Please rise. Into thy hands, O merciful Savior, we commend thy servant Thomas. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech thee, a sheep of thine own fold, a lamb of thine own flock, a sinner of thine own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of thy mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Be present, O merciful God, and protect you so that you who are worried and wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may repose upon thy eternal changelessness, and then may the blessing of God, the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.